Hello everyone, welcome to our webinar series on Intermarket Analysis. Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, this series is designed to provide you with valuable insights into how different financial markets are interconnected and how this relationship can be leveraged to enhance your trading strategy. So uh, we are very excited to kick off this journey with you and our goal is to empower you with the knowledge and tools you need to succeed in the ever-evolving world of forex trading. So uh, uh, today we are starting a journey that will uh, take us through the um, interconnected web of financial markets. Over the next few sessions, we will dive deep into understanding how different markets uh, like commodities, equities, bonds, and currencies interact with uh, one another. Uh, we will explore how these relationships can provide valuable insights and impact your trading decisions, especially if you are focusing on the forex market. So. Uh, here's what uh, we have lined up for today's session. First, uh, we will start with an introduction to intermarket analysis, explaining what it is and why it's important for traders. Next, uh, we'll discuss the four major asset classes, uh, commodities, equities, bonds, and currencies, and how they are traditionally interconnected. Uh, we will move on to some practical examples and case studies that uh, demonstrate how you can apply intermarket analysis in real-world trading scenarios. And finally, we will wrap up uh, this session. It's an interactive Q&A session, and uh, you can ask uh, all of your questions uh, uh, related uh, our uh, the material we've covered. So I encourage you to think about how these topics apply to your own trading and just uh, 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 let's say, let me know if you have any question about that. Just write it down through the chat box. Through the webinar, I will try to uh, answer your question as soon as possible. However, we will keep all the questions um, until the end of the webinar, and we will make sure that every everyone is answered. So, uh, to get the most out of today's uh, sessions, I recommended a few things. <clears throat> First, you can take notes. There's going to be a lot of information and jotting down and key points uh, will help reinforce your learning. Second, don't hesitate to ask questions whether you are here live or watching a recording. Uh, your engagement is key to making this experience beneficial. And finally, think about how the concepts we discussed today apply to your own trading strategy. So consider how you might use this new knowledge to enhance your approach and improve your results. Remember, this is a learning journey and every bit of knowledge you gain today can help you become a more informed and confident trader. So. Uh, this is also, without further ado, let's dive into the world of intermarket analysis and uh, get explored. Okay, so you're ready? Let's begin. Okay, this webinar is brought to you by Aranta, which is an online broker. And please note before we begin. Uh, this, the content of the webinar should not be construed as investment advice of any kind. The, the strategies information provided are for educational purposes only and should not be considered as a recommendation to trade. So, because trading this carries a high level of risk and it's possible to lose all your invested capital. Okay, uh, with this uh, risk disclaimer, Let's get started with our first topic and explore the intermarket analysis. This is also we're setting the stage. Uh, intermarket analysis is about looking at the big picture. It's about understanding how various financial markets influence each other and how these interconnections can provide us with valuable trading signals. This series is designated specifically uh, with forex traders in mind. We'll cover practical applications and strategies you can use to enhance your forex trading by understanding this intermarket dynamics. So let's uh, get us started uh, and continue uh, with the definition of intermarket analysis and dive deeper into the core of our discussion today. We're first defining what intermarket analysis is. 
At this core, we can say uh, intermarket analysis is essentially a method of uh, analyzing financial markets by examining the relationships between different asset classes. This includes stocks, bonds, commodities, and currencies. The fundamental idea here is that movements in one market can often provide clues about future movements in another. For example, if commodity prices are rising, it might impact currency values of commodity exporting countries, and this in return could affect stock and bond markets. So, understanding these interconnections can be incredibly valuable for traders. Uh, we will get through the aspect of why is intermarket analysis so important because there are three main reasons that we will cover in this session. First, it enhances market understanding. Second, it improves decision making. And third, it supports risk management. Uh, and now let's break it down together. Uh, starting with market understanding, um, intermarket analysis allows us to, uh, let's say, is to see the bigger picture of the market by looking at uh, how different markets are re related. We can better predict future price movements and identify broader market trends. For instance, a rising stock market might indicate economic growth, but if we also see a rising bonds market, it might suggest that there are concerns about inflation or interest rates. This kind of analysis helps traders not just react to market changes, but anticipate them. And the next one is uh, that it improves decision making. Uh, Intermarket analysis provides traders with a more comprehensive view of the economic environment, helping them make informed trading decisions. For example, uh, understanding the relationship between bond yields and currency strength can help a forex trader decide whether to go long or short on a currency progress on the new pol uh, uh, monetary policy decision. By leveraging signals from uh, across different markets, let's say, traders can develop more robust tr strategies and uh, that are aligned with the broader economic uh, context. Finally, uh, we have risk management. One of the key benefits of intermarket analysis is its ability to help traders diversify their portfolios and manage risks more effectively. By understanding how different asset classes are correlated, traders, uh, traders can reduce their exposure to risks. For example, uh, if a stocks and bonds are moving inversely, holding a mix of both could hedge against uh, losses in one market. So knowing these relationships uh, helps traders protect their investment, especially in volatile markets. Now let's uh, look at the historical context and evolution of intermarket analysis. The field really started gaining traction in the 1980s and 1990s, a time uh, when um, global trading became more prevalent and financial data became more accessible. Traders begin to realize that markets do not move in isolation, they are interconnected and influenced by a range of factors like interest rates, economic data, geopolitical events, and uh, let's say in investor sentiment. Uh, as technology advanced, uh, the ability to perform uh, sophisticated intermarket analysis improved significantly. Today, with powerful softwares and data analytics tools, traders can quickly analyze vast am amounts of data and uncover hidden relationships within different markets. So, a key figure in the development of intermarket analysis is John Murphy. I think most of you might know him. His work uh, laid out many of the principles and key relationships that are still used today. Murphy's insights into how markets are interconnected have made intermarket analysis uh, a fundamental part of any trader's toolkit. 
Uh, so, in conclusion, I would say intermarket analysis is a vital tool uh, for anyone looking to navigate the complexities of financial markets because it helps traders understand market dynamics more fully, make informed decisions, and manage risk effectively. While the field has evolved over the years, the core principles remain as relevant as ever by Incorporating intermarket analysis into your trading strategy, you will be better equipped to handle market movements and seize opportunities as they arise. As we move forward in this series, uh, series we will continue to build on this foundation, exploring more specific intermarket relationships and how to apply them in your trading. Now, uh, what we have a solid understanding of uh, what intermarket analysis is and why it's important let's dive into the fundamental concepts starting with the four major asset classes each of these asset classes commodities equities bonds and currencies plays a unique role in the financial markets and has its own set of characteristics and influences understanding these and can help us see the connections between them and how they can impact each other. Okay, uh, first off, uh, first off, we have commodities. Commodities are physical goods like gold, oil, or and um, agricultural products like wheat. Uh, and these assets are the backbone of the physical market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry for interruption. We face a very minor technical issue that has been fixed right now. Okay, so these assets are the backbone of the physical markets and are essential for the production and consumption processes that drive the global economy. The prices of commodities are primarily driven by supply and demand dynamics. For instance, if there is a drop that impacts the supply of wheat, the price of wheat will likely increase. For example, similarly, geopolitical events such as tensions in the Middle East uh, can drive oil prices up due to concerns about supply disruptions. Uh, economic conditions also play a crucial role. In a growing economy, demand for commodities like oil and copper uh, tends to increase, pushing prices higher. And next we have equities or stocks. Equities are present ownership in a company, giving investors a claim on the company's assets and earnings. So, the stock prices are influenced by a variety of factors, including corporate earnings, which you, you usually hear in the news about that, economic growth of the whole country, or the um, improvement in the company's operation. Also, investor sentiments, how they feel about the future, like what we see has happened to Tesla stock, for example, because of the very optimistic uh, outlook and very positive uh, investor sentiment that Tesla uh, ran up and also interest rates. We see how the uh, equity market is celebrating the uh, higher probability of rate caught in September by Federal Reserve. And corporate earnings are a direct indicator of the of a company's performance. So when a company reports a strong earnings, uh, it's a stock price often goes up. Economic growth is also crucial. When the economy is doing well, companies generally perform better and stock prices tend to rise. Uh, investor sentiment can have a big impact too. Even if a company's fundamentals are strong, negative sentiment can drive stock prices down. And lastly, interest rates influence the stocks because they affect borrowing costs and consumer spending. Higher rates can lead to lower stock prices as companies as uh, and uh, consumers cut back on spendings. So the uh, the next asset class is 
bond market and moving on to bonds. Bonds are debt securities issued by governments or corporations to raise capital. They are considered fixed income securities because they provide regular interest payments to investors. One of the key characteristics of bonds is their inverse relationship with interest rates. When interest rates rise, bond prices typically fall. And when rates fall, bond prices tend to rise. Uh, I can say bonds are also affected by inflation expectations and economic stability. If investors expect inflation to rise, uh, they uh, may demand higher yields to com compensate for the loss of purchasing power, which can drive bond prices down. Similarly, in times of economic uncertainty, bonds, especially government bonds, are often seen as safe haven assets, which can drive their prices up as investors seek safety. safety. And uh, finally, let's talk about currencies or the forex market, which is the main focus of uh, our traders. Yep. Yeah, currencies represent the exchange rate between two countries and are traded in pairs like the Euro USD or USD JPY. As you know, the forex market is the largest financial market in the world and is influenced by a wide range of factors. Interest rates play a significant role in currency values. We know that uh, higher interest rates uh, tend to attract foreign capital leading to a stronger currency. Also, economic data such as GDP growth uh, or let's say employment figures and uh, trade balance also impact currency prices. Uh, Moreover, um, political stability is another important factor. Currencies of politically stable countries are often seen as safer investments. And lastly, capital flows, which are movements of money for the purpose of investment, production, or trade, can affect uh, currency prices. For example, if uh, there is a, a surge in foreign investment in, in country, its uh, currency may appreciate due to increased demand. So uh, I hope I could give you a picture about all of these four for markets. In conclusion, our understanding these four major asset classes, commodities, equities, bonds, and currencies, is crucial for intermarket analysis because it has its unique characteristics and drivers, and their inter interactions can provide valuable insights into market dynamics. As we move forward, we'll explore how these asset classes influence each other and how you can use this knowledge to enhance your trading strategies. So let's continue holding on this foundation as we delve deeper into, uh, let's say, intermarket relationships. Okay, now uh, that we have covered the basics of the four major asset classes, let's explore how these markets are traditionally interconnected. Understanding these relationships is key for forex traders because Movements in one market can provide valuable signals about potential changes in another market. So we'll focus on three main relationships in this uh, session. Commodities and currencies, the relationship between equities and bonds, and also uh, bonds and currencies. Okay. So the relationship between commodities and currencies is a fundamental aspect of global financial markets. Commodities are currency, uh, and currencies are interlinked in several ways, uh, primarily through trade, inflation, economic growth, and geopolitical factors. So understanding this relationship is crucial for traders, investors, economists, and let's say policymakers because uh, it influences market dynamics, investment strategies, and uh, 
also economic policies. So here is a detailed exploration of this uh, relationship. First, let's take a look at the uh, um, trade and balance of payments. Uh, we know we have export-driven economies, countries that are major exporters of commodities often see their currency value rise when the prices of these commodities increase. So, for example, Canada, Australia and Russia are significant exporters of oil, minerals and agricultural products. So, when the prices of these commodities rise, it leads to a higher inflow of foreign currencies, improving the trade balance and increasing demand for the exporter's currency, and causing it uh, to appreciate. And also we have import uh, dependent economies, uh, conversely uh, countries that are large importers of commodities such as oil or industrial materials uh, may experience depreciation of their currency when commodity prices rise because higher import costs can lead to a negative trade balance, reducing demand for the country's currency. As a terms of trade, which is another important factor, we can say um, we need to focus on improvements or deterioration as well in terms of trade. The terms of trade, which means the ratio of export prices to import prices, are a critical factor here. Because if a country's export prices, often commodities, increase relative to its import prices, the terms of trade improve, potentially leading to a stronger currency. For example, if oil prices arise in Canada, and Canada as an oil exporter benefits from higher export re revenue, the Canadian dollar or CAD might appreciate. So this is how uh, at, the, at, at the first this is the first aspect that how commodities and currencies are uh, interconnected uh, somehow. But here is the next aspect, which is uh, commodity prices and inflation rates. Uh, first, let's uh, make this concept in, two, in this way. Uh, look at the direct impact and uh, also the currency depreciation first because, because before we go to monetary policy response. because. Commodities, especially energy and food, are, are integral to consumer prices and production costs. It means a rise in commodity prices, such as oil or wheat, can lead to higher consumer prices, pushing inflation up, which is uh, this way. Higher inflation may prompt central banks to raise interest rates to control price levels, impacting currency value. It also has a currency depreciation, uh, let's say, impact, which means if a country experiences higher inflation due to rising commodity prices but does not adjust interest rates accordingly, its currency may depreciate. And this is because higher inflation reduces the purchasing power of the currency. And next, monetary policy responses. At the frontier, we have interest rate adjustments. We know central banks monitor inflation closely. So if commodity-induced in in inflation threatens economic stability, they may raise interest rates, making the currency more attractive to investors seeking higher yields. And this can lead to currency appreciation because of increasing demand. And of course, economic growth and commodity currencies is another aspect of this relationship between commodities and currencies. Let's take a look at the growth uh, factors or growth correlation. Um, we can put this argument two ways. First, resource-rich economies and then impacts of lower commodity prices. 
In countries heavily reliant on commodity exports, economic growth is often closely linked to commodity prices. Higher commodity prices boost national income, increase investment, and support economic expansion. And this growth can strengthen the currency as it attracts foreign investment and increases demand for the currency. And conversely, a drop in commodity prices can negatively affect growth in these economies, leading to potential currency depreciation as foreign investors seek more stable or profitable environments. And the, uh, the last aspect we're taking a look here at is geopolitical factors and market sentiment. We know geopolitical tensions in key commodity producing regions can lead to supply disruptions, pushing up commodity prices. For instance, tensions in the Middle East can affect oil supply, leading to higher prices if the other condition uh, other conditions keep stable. Currency values of oil importing nations may weaken due to increased import costs, while those of exporters uh, may uh, um, strengthen. In times of uh, usually geopolitical uncertainty or market turmoil, investors often flock to safe haven currencies like the US dollar, Swiss franc, or Japanese yen. And this flight to safety can overshadow commodity currency correlations temporarily. This is what we, uh, we, we see uh, uh, that happened uh, in USDCHF uh, and also happened in oil market in past few months. Then I would like to add uh, another aspect here is uh, um, speculative activities and hedging um, uh, uh, speculation. Yeah. Uh, for, first, we need to focus on investor behavior as well because speculators often use currencies and commodities to hedge or uh, diversify portfolios. For instance, investors may buy currencies for commodity rich countries if they anticipate a rise in commodity prices, thus influencing currency demand and valuation uh, a bit higher than the reality somehow. And also we have some hedging activities among investors or uh, let's say traders. And um, to study that we need to take a closer look at currency and commodity hedging because companies involved in global trade often hedge against currency risk and commodity price fluctuations. For example, an airline might hedge against rising fuel prices or a commodity, which is a commodity, and potential currency depreciation simultaneously, impacting both commodity and currency market. And you, you imagine if all the airlines go through this way and they uh, just try to hedge the, uh, their investment against the rising fuel prices by, uh, uh, let's say, uh, investing in another currency. So you see that, that that would make a very, very huge flow of money to one currency or one commodity market and then can influence the demand in general and that would impact the market for sure. And uh, for example, as a case study of commodity currency relationships, uh, we have petrol currencies oil prices and currencies, they have a very, very good relationship with a clear relationship. Um, for example, the currencies of oil exporting countries such as the Canadian, Canadian dollar, um, Norwegian krone and a Russian ruble uh, often move in tandem with oil prices. It means higher oil prices generally lead to stronger currencies for these nations give the increased export revenues and also uh, they have a gold and safe haven currencies gold is a unique commodity as it often acts as a hedge against currency depreciation and inflation both together it means the relationship between gold and currencies like the us dollar is typically inverse when the dollar weakens 
uh, gold prices often rise as investors seek value or preserve, uh, preservation somehow. So the relationship between commodities and uh, currencies is uh, multifaceted and driven by several factors, including trade balances, inflation, economic growth, geopolitical events, and market sentiment. Understanding this dynamic is crucial for making informed trading and investment decisions for traders and investors. Analyzing the commodity currency relationship provides insights into market trends and potential risks, enabling you to better navigate the complex interplay of global financial markets. However, the relationship with equities and bond is another fundamental concept in financial markets and portfolio management. Both asset classes uh, represent uh, different types of investment with distinct characteristics, risk profiles, and return potentials. Okay, so understanding the uh, let's say the relationship between equities and bond is crucial for investors as it helps in portfolio diversification as the it's just the first result and then it helps risk management and asset allocation strategies so uh, let's go through it and uh, have a in-depth exploration of the relationship between equities and bonds <clears throat> Okay, let's get through the basic characteristics of equities and bonds. Uh, for equities, we, we have uh, some characteristics. First is the ownership. Equities represent ownership in a company. When an investor buys shares of a company's stock, they become a partial owner of the company and have a claim on a portion of its assets and earnings. For returns, equities offer the potential for capital appreciation, which means increase in the stock price and also dividends, a share of the company's profits paid to shareholders. However, they also carry higher risk as stock prices can be volatile and influenced by various factors, including company performance, economic conditions, and market sentiment. And also as a risk profile, we could say equities are considered high risk investments compared to bonds, as they are more, uh, let's say, susceptible um, to market fluctuations and economic cycles. Uh, which means investors in equities are also last in line to be paid in case of a company's liquidation after creditors and bondholders. On the other side, we have bonds, which are debt instruments. Uh, they are fixed income securities representing a loan made by an investor to a borrower, typically a corporation or let's say government. In return for the loan, the bond issuer promises uh, to pay back the principal amount, the bond's face value, its maturity, and uh, makes periodic interest payments as a coupons to the bondholder. So, uh, the return also here is different than equities. The return on bonds uh, comes um, uh, primarily from the interest payments and to a lesser extent from capital gains if the bond is sold at a price higher than its purchase price. So bonds generally provide a more stable and predictable income stream than equities. But if we look at the risk profile, we see another advantages to bonds here as well bonds are considered lower risk investments uh, than equities particularly government bonds which are often seen as a virtually risk free we call it that in finance risk free assets because corporate bonds carry a higher risk than government bonds but 
typically less than equity, so they are in the middle. And bondholders have priority over equity holders in case of bankruptcy or liquidation of the company, making bonds less risky in terms of credit risk. So it's really important after this uh, introduction to uh, see the general picture is in the bonds and uh, equities. They have an inverse relationship. Uh, but we can put it in different ways. Uh, first is a risk on environment and then is a risk off environment. When investors are confident in the economy and, uh, and markets, they tend to favor equities, seeking higher returns. And, and this behavior is known as a risk on sentiment. In such periods, the demand for bonds typically decreases, leading to lower bond prices demand, uh, and higher yields, uh, since bond prices and yields move inversely. So when you see a, a bond, uh, for example, a 10 year US uh, Treasury bond has higher yield, which means the price is less, which means the demand decreased. In, in, in that case, we see the price, uh, the prices uh, have fallen, so we have the higher yields because there is a negative, let's say, relationship between the yields and the price of a, a specific bond. So uh, the best case uh, study for that is what we have seen recently in US market after uh, increasing in speculation and rate cuts by um, Federal Reserve in September, we saw the market uh, uh, went very cherish on that and we saw the risk of, uh, let's say, risk on environment in the market. But conversely, we have risk off environment. In times of economic uncertainty, market downturns, or geopolitical instability, investors often move to safer assets, a behavior known as risk off sentiment. They sell equities, causing stock prices to fall, and buy bonds, driving up bond prices and lowering yields. This inverse relationship can be seen as a flight to safety, where investors prioritize preserving capital over seeking higher returns. And uh, now let's discuss the interest rate and inflation, which is another, uh, uh, which are another factors can impact the relationship between equities and bonds. Central banks like the Federal Reserve in the United States uh, adjust interest rates to manage economic growth and inflation. We know rising interest rates typically lead to higher bond yields and lower bond uh, prices because new bonds are issued with higher coupons, uh, making existing bonds uh, less attractive. And higher interest rates can also negatively impact equities as borrowing costs increase uh, for companies, potentially reducing profitability and leading to lower stock prices. Uh, but uh, inflation erodes the purchasing power of fixed income payments from bonds, making them less attractive in the, uh, in the society. So if inflation expectations rise, bond yields tend to increase to compensate investors for the loss of purchasing power, causing bond prices to fall. Equities, on the other hand, can sometimes act as a hedge against inflation, especially if companies can pass higher costs on to uh, consumers through price increases. Uh, and uh, in that case, they will be able to maintain their profitability. The next thing that we can look at is the diversification benefits. There is a, a negative correlation, okay? The general negative correlation between equities and bonds 
um, meaning they often move in opposite directions. For example, if you see here, we have a uh, U.S. government bonds 10 years yields on a daily basis, and also we have a Dow Jones Industrial Index of the NYSE. So um, you can see there are times that there is a negative correlation between them, like it, like this. Let me just turn on my laser point, maybe can help. Yeah, like six periods of time here, or what has uh, happened recently here, or this uh, divergence between the prices of the uh, bond yields and also and the Dow Jones index here, or this uh, convergence here. So you see, there is a negative correlation most of the time between these two. Uh, assets. So when equities perform poorly, bonds tend to perform better and vice versa, providing a balancing effect that can reduce overall portfolio volatility and risk for uh, investors. By holding a mix of equities and bonds, investors can achieve a better risk-adjusted return. As the positive performance of one asset class can offset the negative performance of the other. So, this diversification reduces the portfolio's exposure to the risk associated with any single asset class. The next one uh, is uh, market cycle dynamics, economic cycles. Um, uh, are worth to mention because uh, we can we can we can break it down to uh, to um, let's say uh, different categories: expansion phase and recession phase. This is what uh, the markets uh, have been talking about recession for a long time. Yeah, during periods of economic expansion, um, companies generally perform well, leading to rising stock prices. In this environment, interest rates may rise as central banks aim to prevent the economy from overheating, causing bond prices to fall. So this is an example of the negative correlation between equities and bonds in action. But in, in a recession or economic slowdown, equities often underperform due to reduced corporate earnings and investor pessimism. During these times, central banks may lower interest rates to uh, stimulate growth, making bonds more attractive and driving their prices up. Again, this reflects the inverse relationship between equities and bonds. And the next factor is uh, exceptions and anomalies. During severe financial crises or market panics, both equities and bonds can move in the same direction, usually downward, as investors sell off all types of assets to raise cash or reduce risk. For example, during the 2008 financial crisis, both equity and bond markets were highly volatile and correlations between them increased. Also, unconventional monetary policies such as uh, quantitative easings yeah, we, we refer to as a QNE, QE can disrupt the typical relationship between equities and bonds as well. Because QE involves central banks buying large amounts of uh, government bonds to lower interest rates and uh, stimulate the economy, which can simultaneously support both bond prices and equities, leading to positive correlation. So the relationship between equities and bonds is complex and influenced by various factors, including economic conditions, interest rates, inflation, market sentiment, and geopolitical events. Typically, Equities and bonds have an inverse relationship, providing diversification benefits for investors seeking to manage 
uh, risk and uh, optimize returns. However, this relationship can change depending on the economic environment and market conditions. So it's really important to understand it very well because it's essential for effective portfolio management, enabling you to navigate the financial markets complexities and achieve uh, your investment objectives in better way. And now the relationship between bonds and currencies is another important aspect of global financial markets for us as a forex trader as they are closely interconnected through interest rates inflation expectations capital flows and economic policies so understanding this relationship is also very crucial let's just start it uh, let's um, explore uh, this relationship between bonds and uh, currencies starting with uh, interest rates and uh, yields uh, or bond yields. Uh, the interest rates set by central banks, such as the Federal Reserve in the United States or the European Central Bank in the Eurozone, are one, uh, are one of the most significant factors influencing bond yields. When central banks raise interest rates uh, to control inflation or um, simulate growth, uh, bond yields typically rise as new bonds are issued with higher coupon rates. So it's really important to know that. Let me repeat it again because it's very important. When central banks raise interest rates to control inflation or stimulate growth, like what happened during 2020 and 2022, Bond yields typically rise as new bonds are issued with higher coupon rates. Conversely, when interest rates are lowered, bond yields generally fall. That's why the market usually uses the bond yields as uh, as uh, a, a signal or let's say as a barometer for the general economic condition to see how it's performing compared to interest rates. But we have a currency valuation here uh, as well to consider. We know higher interest rates tend to attract foreign capital because they offer better returns on investments in that currency. As a result, demand for the currency increases, leading to currency appreciation. For example, if the U.S. Federal Reserve raises interest rates, U.S. bond yields rise, attracting foreign investors to buy U.S. bonds, which in turn increases demand for the U.S. dollar or USD, causing it to appreciate. See, this is a very, very interesting relationship between them. But before we uh, jump to inflation expectations and currency value, let's uh, also um, somehow break down the bond yield and currency movements because the difference in bond yields between two, current, uh, two countries, known as the yield differential, can significantly impact currency exchange rates. Investors often engage in a carry trade where they borrow in a currency with low yields and invest in a currency with higher yields. This is what uh, has happened to USD JPY or the USD CHF during past year and during few past few weeks and months. Uh, because uh, this is a strategy increases demands for the higher yielding currency leading to its uh, appreciation. If we look at the USD JPY, we see that the uh, interest rate of the US is higher than Japan. So the investors are leaning to invest their money into uh, USD. So uh, uh, against uh, somehow against the uh, JPY. So that's a way that they're trying to make a uh, profit from the, the positive differentiation between the interest rates in the US and the Japan. And we know that as a carry trade a strategy. So if US Treasury yields, uh, for example, are higher than German bond yields, is what is uh, what, what, what is happening right now. Investors 
might sell euros or buy dollars to invest in US treasuries, leading to a stronger dollar and a weaker euro. And if the other conditions keep stable and keep the same, so we can see the, uh, let's say, uh, the weakening of the euro dollar, for example. Uh, so the next, next thing that we want to discuss is Yeah, excuse me. The next thing which is very important, let me, is, uh, yeah, inflation expectations and currency value. Okay, the interest rates uh, set by central banks, such as the Federal Reserve in the U.S., or the European Central Bank in the Eurozone are one of the most significant factors influencing bond yields. How it works, let's say, uh, when central banks raise interest rates to control inflation or um, stimulate growth, bond yields typically rise as new bonds are issued with higher coupon rates. Conversely, when interest rates are lowered, bond yields generally fall. Okay, let's get through the inflation expectations and currency value. We know inflation erodes the real value of future cash flows from bonds, making them less attractive to investors. If inflation expectations rise, bond prices tend to fall and yields rise to compensate for the higher inflation risk. Investors demand a higher yield to offset the loss of purchasing power, leading to increased bond yield. This is how it works. And if we look at the currency depreciation, we know higher inflation can also lead to currency depreciation because if a country experiences higher inflation compared to its trading partners, its currency purchasing power declines, making it less attractive to investors. As a result, demand for that currency falls, uh, causing it uh, to depreciate. And central banks closely monitor inflation and may adjust interest rates to manage it. We know that. And if inflation is high, central banks might increase interest rates like what they did in 2021 or 22, and rising bond yields and supporting the currency. Conversely, if inflation is low, right at the, uh, the, the um, situation right now, it's it usually uh, central banks usually fabricate lower rates. Um, reducing bond yields and potentially weakening the currency. This is what has been happening to uh, US dollar in past three weeks. Then we have capital flows and investment decisions that can uh, shed a light on the relationship between bonds and currency. When a country's bond yields are attractive relative to other countries, uh, it can draw foreign investment to this uh, bond market. It means foreign investors need to purchase a domestic currency to buy these bonds, increasing demand for that currency and leading to its appreciation. Uh, if, for example, Japanese investors find a U.S. bond more attractive due to higher yields, they may convert yen to dollars to invest in these bonds. And this activity increases demand for the dollar, leading to its appreciation against the yen. Uh, in times, it, it, it worth some um, note that we have a risk aversion and safe haven flows that can impact the markets. Because uh, let's say in times of global economic uncertainty, or market volatility, investors often seek safety in safe havens as haven assets like US treasuries, German bonds, or Japanese government bonds. 
These assets are considered low risk and their demand can increase sharply during crisis, leading to currency appreciation uh, for the countries issuing these bonds. However, for example, during a financial crisis, global investors may flock to U.S. treasuries, increasing the demand for the U.S. dollar as a safe haven. And this dynamic often strengthens the dollar while weakening other currencies as capital flows into U.S. bonds. Uh, the next one is uh, sovereign credit ratings and currency impacts. Let's put it this way. Country's sovereign credit rating reflects its ability to repay debt. A downgrade in credit rating can lead to higher bond yields as investors demand more compensation for increased risk. And this can negatively impact the currency if investors lose confidence in the country's economic stability. So, for instance, if a major economy like the United States or Japan were to experience a credit rating downgrade, the yields on their bonds might rise due to perceived higher risk, leading to capital outflows of the economy and the potential depreciation of the currency. <clears throat> As an example, it's worth to mention that the, during the European debt crisis, countries like Greece experienced downgrades in either credit rating leading to higher less, uh, yields on uh, Greek bonds and significant depreciation of the euro against other major currencies. Uh, of course, as uh, the other factors, we can say uh, we, we have geopolitical events and market sentiment and also uh, the monetary policy and quantitative easing. To understand it, uh, let me tell you uh, that geopolitical events such as wars, political instability or trade disputes uh, can influence both bonds yields and currency values together. Investors may sell bonds uh, of countries facing geopolitical risk uh, leading to higher yields. At the same time, or let's say at the same time, uh, these events can cause capital flight, resulting in currency depreciation for the affected countries. Conversely, geopolitical risks in uh, one region can lead to a flight to safety in another. For example, tensions in the Middle East might drive investors to buy US bonds, appreciating the dollar due to safe haven demand. Investor, uh, investor sentiment is another uh, important factor uh, which plays uh, a role in the bond currency relationship. Positive economic sets or developments can boost confidence, leading to currency appreciation and stable or lower bond yields. Conversely, negative sentiment can cause both bond yields to rise and the currency to depreciate. And last but not least, we have quantitative easing or QE, as a, which is a monetary policy tool used by central banks to stimulate the economy by purchasing government bonds and other securities. And this action lowers bond yield and uh, increases the money supply, potentially leading to currency depreciation as more currency uh, circulates in the economy. And for example, the US Federal Reserve's QE program uh, post-2008 financial crisis led to lower US bond yields and a weaker dollar as the increased money supply reduced the currency's value. So uh, the relationship between bonds and currencies is complex and influenced by various factors including interest rates, inflation expectations, capital flows, geopolitical events, and monetary policy changes. Uh, and we know uh, the changes in bond yields and interest rates directly impact currency values through capital flows and the relative attractiveness of different markets. Understanding this dynamic is essential for us as a trader or investor uh, because it, it makes us able to make more informed decisions and uh, 
manage risks and make a better decision about asset allocation and also uh, understanding economic policies. Okay, here I have two practical examples to show you how it works usually. All right, uh, let's now shift our focus to the practical application of intermarket analysis in forex trading. Understanding this interconnection is crucial for making information trading decisions. Let's start with a simple example, bond yields. As we've discussed, uh, bond yields can have significant impacts on currency values when uh, when bond yields are rising it often signals that the country's interest rates might increase or uh, this economic conditions are improving for forex traders as we are uh, this is a signal that the currency could strengthen so imagine you are you see here we have uh, the DXY which is a dollar index and the US 10 year government bond here and you see they have a, a somehow positive correlation together imagine you're monitoring US Treasury yields and you notice that uh, you notice they are beginning to rise. As a trader, you might anticipate that this increase will attract foreign investment, driving up demand for the US dollar. In this scenario, you could um, position yourself by going long on the USD against other currencies like the Euro or the Yen, expecting the dollar to strengthen as yield continues to rise. So this is just one example of how uh, intermarket connection works okay okay let's move on to our first case study here the 2015-16 oil price crash uh, this was a significant event that provided a textbook example of how intermarket analysis can be applied during this period oil prices okay i hope everyone can see my slide very well great yeah, I was saying during this period, oil prices fell sharply, dropping from over $100 per barrel in mid 2014 to under $30 per barrel by early 2016. And you can see uh, this is a huge drop from here to here in the chart. This dramatic decline has a profound impact on global markets, particularly in the currencies of oil exporting countries like Canada. As oil prices plumped, uh, the Canadian dollar or loonie also depreciated significantly. As you can see here, you have a USD CAD, which means the USD CAD going uh, in the opposite direction of the Canadian dollar. When the Canadian dollar weakens, uh, the USD CAD appreciates. And why? Because Canada is a major oil exporter and lower oil prices means lower revenues for the Canadian economy. So forex traders using intermarket analysis could have anticipated this uh, currency, uh, let's say, movement. For example, by understanding the relationship between oil prices and the Canadian dollar, uh, we could have shorted the US, the, the, the CAD USD, or uh, let's say 
go long on USD CAT per capitalizing on the decline in the loony as oil prices continue to fall. So this case study demonstrates how intermarket analysis helps traders see beyond individual markets, understanding how a drop in commodity prices can lead to depreciation in a related currency. So it, um, let's say, underscores the importance of staying informed about commodity markets, especially for currencies uh, tied closely to specific exports. Now let's discuss another recent example, the surge in US dollar strength during the 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. As the pandemic has spread globally, uncertainty and fear dominated financial markets. If you remember, investors sought safety, safety and traditionally the US dollar is considered a safe haven asset. And this led to a surge in demand for the dollar, causing it to strengthen against almost all other currencies. At the same time, commodities like gold and oil experience significant volatility. Gold initially spiked as a safe haven asset, but eventually sold off as investors, uh, let's say, sought liquidity in cash, particularly US dollars. And oil prices, on the other hand, plummeted due. Uh, to a combination of decreased demand and supply glut. For, uh, for uh, us as uh, forex traders, uh, this period was a classic case of intermarket relationship in action by understanding that the US dollar would likely strengthen as a safe haven traders who position themselves accordingly. For example, if, um, uh, for example, we could have gone along on USD against other currencies or even shorted uh, commodities like oil in anticipation of further declines. And this example shows how external events like a global pandemic can cause ripples across various markets. As you see here in my chart, we have the uh, from January, February, March. From the March, we have a drop in the US dollar, uh, like here till the mid of 2000, uh, 2021. And then, as the market uh, appreciates the US dollar, we see a drop in gold uh, somehow the next year in the mid of uh, 2022. And this is a very nice uh, example. And also, we have the rivers. Um, a relationship between them as we see the US dollar decreased in early 2023, but we see the gold uh, increased in price in prices uh, during that time, sharing the uh, weaker dollar. So as we move forward in this webinar series, we'll continue to explore more strategies and applications of uh, intermarket analysis helping you to enhance your trading skills and confidence. Uh, by the way, thank you so much for your attention. I think this is uh, for myself from now on. And I'm really excited to share that in our next webinar, we'll be diving deeper into correlation analysis. We'll explore how to identify and leverage correlations between different asset classes to further refine your trading strategies. That's great. Okay, remember that the knowledge you've gained today is a valuable addition to your trading toolkit. and. Uh, by understanding the interconnections between different markets, you will be better equipped to navigate the complexities of forex trading and capitalize on opportunities. By the way, thank you once again for being here today. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. And until then, keep practicing, stay informed, and apply what you've learned to enhance your trading strategies. Have a great day and see you next time.